Hello, my name is Gabriel Neves. I'm Tecla Bridges Manager at HQ and ESPU, and I'm here with uh, Jan Eric to present Quadri and Tecla, where roads and bridge come together. Yes, hello, my name is Jan Eric Hul. I'm the product um, owner of uh, uh, Nova Point Bridge and Nova Point Tunnel. And in addition, I'm a project manager for several consultancy projects here in uh, Trimble Solutions Sandvika. Today, we will we'll show you the seamless data flow between uh, Quadri and Tecla structures. This seamless data flow is totally without files and is based on uh, what we call Quadri connector for Tecla structures. That's, that is an extension to the Quadri community. So this is the, today's agenda. First, we will do an introduction, uh, and then we will show you how to make a design task in Quadri. The design task is the, is the anchor for uh, the data flow between uh, Quadri and uh, Tecla structures. Then we will transfer the terrain model, the reference line, and the road surface edge lines from Quadri to Tecla with this Quadri connector extension. We will create the bridge in Tecla structures with, uh, with another extension called Tecla Bridge Creator. And then we will again transfer the data, the, the bridge data the geometry back to Quadri with this Quadri connector. Uh, to the end, we will change the road geometry. We will widen the road. Uh, this is a, a common situation in, in everyday design that the road geometry is changed. And then we will transfer the, the modified road lines back to Tecla and uh, Gabriel here will do the, the changes in the bridge geometry and show how easy it is to, uh, to modify the bridge design based on the changed road geometry. So in this, this uh, session today, I will be the road engineer and Gabriel will be the bridge designer. So here's a very brief introduction uh, uh, that we want to show you exactly how this works. On the left-hand side here, we have the Quadri application. On the right-hand side, we have Tecla Structures application. And in between, we have this Quadri connector. And as an extension on Tecla, we have Bridge Creator. And what we're going to show you then, as we just uh, told you when we went through the agenda, is that we will take the reference line, the road surface edge lines, and the terrain surface from Quadri to Tecla uh, without any file transfer. And then we will do the bridge design and then uh, transfer the data back, uh, the structured data back into Quadri with Quadri connector. Uh, what I'm going to show you now is how you make this design task in Quadri. So here we have the Quadri user interface. The first thing I do is that uh, I uh, go to the connector tab. I give the, uh, the design task a decent uh, name. And then I start selecting the input data. And this is a rather difficult uh, job. So this requires that you know exactly how your model is. And this is a typical job for the road engineer that know uh, what is the terrain surface, what is the ground surface, which road I'm supposed to use, and which road lines in the road I'm, uh, is, the ro is the bridge designer supposed to use as the edge lines for his bridge. So now I have chosen uh, four tasks here, one for the terrain surface, one for the, the rock surface, and uh, the reference line and uh, the road line. So here I choose just the two shoulder lines in the road superstructure. And these are the lines that the road engineer really needs. And then I go and select uh, the terrain surface just the patch that I need for this uh, model, because Tecla don't, can't handle the large terrain. There's no reason to import the total terrain. 
into Tecla. And here I choose the rock surface. And then finally, uh, I, uh, after inspecting that I have chosen the, the correct objects, I also limit the alignment to be just in the area where I have the bridge. This is the reference line for the bridge. And uh, at the very end here, I will just uh, select a, a patch in the terrain surface so I don't get the whole terrain and don't get the whole ground surface. And then finally, we share this design task to the Quadri server. So I sit here now in Samvika doing the, the, the road design and making this design task. And then I send it to the Quadri server. And uh, Gabriel, who sits in Scotland, in fact, today, he will receive this design task through the Quadri server. And he will now act as the bridge engineer. Thanks, Jan Eric. So now I'm going to, to show how to transfer the data from Quadri to Tecla Structures with the Quadri connector. So the first thing I want to show is Bridge Creator. And you know that Bridge Creator, Bridge Creator can read land XML files or any Tecla construction lines. But today is not about bringing the information using that workflow. So today we want to bring the information using the Kadri uh, connector. But to do that, I go to Kadri, I sign in, and I receive all the information that Jan Eric uh, was creating. And now I can jump into Tecla Structures, load Kadri connector, and I have access to all my tasks. In this case, is the TS2020 boot door, and I have uh, some uh, lines uh, and some topo there. First thing I check is to have the project base point, very, very important. And now I can import all the Quadri features. You can see already one of the lines and is going to load the center line and the north line. And with the chain edges, and now it's still loading, but I still I can already zoom zoom in and I have the the terrain and I'll have the the hard rock, so the rock level for the foundations. Very useful. going to hide that information for you to see how it happens. Now it's time to create the bridge. Uh, after all that uh, uh, small action, very easy to bring the information from Kadri to Tecla Structures. Let's see how we can create the bridge using Bridge Creator. So I have already some foundations. Uh, I reload the chainage uh, and I jump into Bridge Creator. In Bridge Creator, I'm going to pick the feature lines and I define the main reference line. And then I, I'm going to define a cross section. I can go to my own library, create my library, or just create one from scratch. In this case, obviously, I have already something prepared for you. And I have a deck with the start and change, and you can see my concrete points are constrained to those lines uh, from the road that uh, Jan Eric was preparing. You see the point number three, point number two, and point number one are constrained to those lines. So, uh, triangulation interval point, point 20, it's uh, quite accurate, and I'm going to create the object. So I have my deck, it's a double curve deck, uh, curving plan and curving profile. And I like to keep my models uh, very tight. So I change the, the phase, I change the class, I change the material and I keep everything uh, very tight. So deck it's done. Foundations were there uh, as kind of magic because the, those are the only objects uh, I didn't use Bridge Creator. And now I'm going to create the part of the deck that is uh, over the, the bearings of the abutment that usually the deck there is, uh, uh, the depth it's larger. So I want that object to be independent from the deck if I want then later to increase the depth of the deck on that area. And now I'm thinking to, why not doing the abutment? The abutment is still a double curve 
object because in plan it's a curve and in, in profile it's a curve because that point number seven line and the point number three they need to go parallel to the deck and if the deck is in curve that line it's in curve too it's very difficult to model that in tecla in the traditional way so let's use bridge creator to do that start and change and it's done very very simple to to create there is a slight curve on the side of the abutment and now the 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 back of the abutment uh, no need to do any cuts there uh, because the top of the abutment will follow the road. The wing walls, exactly the same, start and change. In this case, with two sections, because we are varying the, the wing wall, obviously. And we end up, again, with a slight curved uh, object there. Very, very simple. A second abutment, very fast, uh, times 10 uh, speed, and it's done. And usually is one of the things that we struggle a little bit with the abutments because of all this cut uh, and because of the double curved object. Again, cleaning the model, everything in proper uh, phase, uh, class and material. Uh, at last, we can place any component, any beam uh, based on Tecla profiles or any poly beam along those lines. Uh, and this is exactly what I'm going to, to tell you. So we have this point number four and point number zero that are, are key for us to place the curb, the parapet, uh, the edge beam, the rail, uh, and all those objects, even lamp posts. So those are the lines I want to use to place all my objects. And uh, I did it before, I deleted all the objects, and now I'm going to, later I'm going to press create, and I'm going to have all those objects with one single click. These objects are Tecla pure objects. They are not extrusions. They are components or beams or poly beams. Uh, and they obey the same rules, start and change or interval or rotation for the placement. And you'll see with one single click, I have the curb, the vehicle parapet, the pedestrian parapet and the edge beams with the spacing. And you see exactly the pedestrian, pedestrian parapet in the middle of the edge beams or the curbs. Now, after all this uh, work that didn't take long, uh, to be honest, it's time to send the bridge back to the road designer and um, uh, allow them to enjoy uh, our art. Very simple. Something I need to highlight here is the conversion rules. So you can create those conversion rules in Quadri. Uh, in this case, uh, I had some from the past. So every single object they need to have the naming matching those conversion rules. And then we just send with the connector the, 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 the objects back to Tecla, uh, to Quadri. Uh, Ian Eric told me not to push too much. Uh, I decided to send everything, including bolts, 7,000 objects. Uh, took a little bit, uh, you can imagine, so many objects going through uh, the network, but you see here the bridge with a high uh, detailing, uh, high level of detail. My peer, it's absolutely wrong. So wrong change, wrong size. Uh, sorry, I'm a newbie with the bridge design. So I will change this later. So the next step now is to change the road geometry in Quadri because I am as a road engineer found out that the road should be much wider. So here we have a Quadri again, and then I received the, the model through the Quadri server from Gabriel so that I get the latest updates of everything he has done. And after I have received the model, I just go to the, to the road task and reserve the road task so that I can do changes on the road task. I should also reserve the design task so that uh, if I manipulate uh, the road lines, the road surface edge lines, as I will do, they will be updated in the design task. So here I am, uh, reserve the, the task I need to reserve. I open the road design task and I go to the design tab and open the road surface definition dialog. And I make a very small but uh, very uh, visible change. I uh, change the width of the road or the, the driving lane from 2.75 to 6 meter wide. 
And then I do a rebuild of the road in Nova Point. We need to rebuild the road after we have done uh, changes on it. And I have a, a view of the road so that I can see that the widening is really happening to the road like this. And then I share the changed road geometry back to the Quadri server so that Gabriel, as the bridge designer he is, receive the changes through the design task. So uh, when the changes come to his side, he will just uh, update the design task and the raw geometry will be changed for him to use in tech cluster ships. So now just to put things into perspective, uh, Ian Eric told me that uh, he was going on uh, Sunday weekend, whatever uh, Norwegians do during the weekend, right? So, and I, next day, it was Sunday, I was going then to receive those, uh, the, that new information. So transfer the modified road lines from Quadri to Tecla Structures with Quadri Connector and do it fast. Usually I like to do things quite fast. So I did it. It was very simple to come here and receive the information. And at this moment, it was still okay. When I jump into Tecla Structures, and I just upgrade, uh, in this case, uh, import and replace Quadri features. I just see the changes. And the changes were, couldn't be more difficult. I was terrified to call Jan Eric for him to change that because I have a friend in Norway and she told me what she does during the weekends. And no way I would call Jan Eric, please change the road on a better location. So. I decided to tackle uh, this um, challenge just to see how far I could stretch Bridge Creator and how long it would take me to amend this bridge using Bridge Creator. So that was my Sunday morning, um, Sunday morning uh, action, amend the, the bridge. So let's, let's see it. I focus in one point. So I, I don't want to see the big picture here. I focus first into the, the this wing wall and I decided to cut short one meter uh, the length of the wing wall to avoid that uh, kick of the road and my wing wall it's solved. And then I go object by object and because the lines, the road lines, they, the name are exactly the same, I just need to load the object, load the file, click the object and create click create again and the object updates. I didn't edit anything into the bridge creator files. Uh, of course, I needed then to push and pull a bit the foundations just for visual purposes. I wasn't uh, thinking about uh, to be uh, precise with the foundation, but for the bridge creator files was just reloading uh, the, the preset, selecting the object and click create again and the object uh, was uh, replaced. Now it's time to change the, the deck. As you've seen, load the file, click the object, click create. Here I did something different because I don't want my deck to follow that road line. I want the, the, the bridge to keep going uh, along the, that width. Uh, I created a virtual point and I put that virtual point at the same distance and level as the point uh, that uh, road that you see there, as that point there. And that virtual point then follows parallel uh, uh, the center line uh, along. So, and now I'm going to attach my point number three concrete to that virtual point, not to the road for the, for this part of the deck and the abutment. And that way I'm avoiding to, to follow that road line that does that kick. And I have my, my, my abutment uh, following. Then I did the same for the, the, the wing wall for the pier here, some changes just uh, drag this and uh, put it in place and I I did appear a bit smaller for the, all these objects uh, it was a little bit more challenging but again once again I decided to go step by step so I'm focusing to the edge beams and then the parapets and I start solving each corner at a time and then here you see it's a big mess but because I use the same uh, the same idea of not following the road for the edge beam. I'm following the virtual line. Uh, we can see now the, the edge beam follows that virtual line. But for the curb, I want the curb to follow the road line. And you'll see when I click uh, change, 
that uh, curve changes. In this case, I'm fixing, sorry, I'm fixing the parapet and then I delete that object. I don't need that. And let's see until this object is out. And I'm going to just um, around with the position of the parapet to be right in the middle of the edge beam. And now I can put the, the curb in place, following the, the road. That makes sense. Now I solve the rails and I decide to, to stop the rails before the kink. And now I don't need so many vertical posts. It was very easy it's just to change the chainage and then the number of posts will disappear, the same on the other corner. And the last corner to solve there, uh, give the proper chainage, more uh, vertical posts. And at last I fix the pier and I'm going to send this pack. Two hours and 30 minutes took me to fix this bridge. And I'm not hands-on for many years. And I still think this is a very good timing if for a change like this, because this was a massive change that usually we don't have that kind of uh, real life situation. But I was very happy. I didn't call Ian Eric, so I was safe in Scotland. Uh, and my peer is still not in the center line. So. As a bonus, uh, I need to fix that, that uh, pier. So let me show you how. So first, again here, I reserved the, I, I looked into Yanerik's uh, videos, so I know what to do to go to the, uh, to Quadri, and I knew the name of the highway uh, road, so is that one there, uh, 1200, I think, uh, and I put that road into my task, the TS-2020 Buddha. So I now uh, save everything and I go and import just that line because I needed to have the road below in order to know where my peer should be because I didn't have any other reference. So I import just that line and you can see there, and this is great news. I can now place my peer traditional way with the move linear box. And for the newbies, please use this box as much as you can. Uh, it's a great tool. And I can just first check where the, the peer, how much the peer is going to move. And then I click uh, the move button and it will be in place. But there are other ways to place uh, and to find out the exact chainage uh, of the intersection of both roads that is using Bridge Creator. And you don't need to load anything, just go Bridge Creator, More, and now the tab Manage. Now pick, select the line, and mid mouse button. Now you don't see the changes, so you can reload the change using a uh, cadre connector or even a bridge creator, and I'm using bridge creator. And now I'm going to reload the display of the change, which is quite useful. But if you do redraw, that will disappear. So now I know it's between 310 or 20, and now I want to know exactly what is the, the change and level of the intersection of the roads. So if I pick the intersect point there, first I pick the, the line and now the intersection. Now I have a, a layout point, Tecla layout point. And what we did was the, the attributes of the change and level will pass to the description uh, of the layout point. You see there, the description and size, they contain that information. You can use it in the drawings. Uh, and in this case, if I was using Bridge Creator to put the component of my peer, I know exactly the challenge is 313, 085 or 45. I cannot read from, from afar. So this is another way to place uh, the, uh, to find out and place the, the peer into the correct uh, challenge. That was a bonus that I wanted to bring here uh, today for you. And now this is the complete uh, bridge. Looks very good, I must say. So I hope this has been uh, useful for you. Uh, please contact us if you have any questions. You have our emails uh, at the lower part of this slide here. Bye for now. Bye bye. It is time to say goodbye for today. Did you find this useful? Let me know in the comments box below. See you in the next episode. Keep safe and have a brimmer day.
Thank you.